I'm really fortunate in that uh, I have multiple rooms, separate rooms, which constitute my laboratory. This is the room in question. And that's necessary because of the methods we use and the organisms we have. This is an artist's rendition of the plankton. It shows the different types of plankton, the zooplankton or animal plankton and phytoplankton, sometimes referred to as the plant plankton. But this artist's rendition shows also the complex environment that they live in. If you look out at Narragansett Bay, you can see the wind is moving things along, the tides are moving the water along. There's always fluid moving around, convection. Nothing stays the same for very much time. So a lot of our studies happen in the lab. So this room is really noisy. This is our life lab where we culture organisms, maintain them, and we call it the life lab because anything toxic is strictly forbidden. So any soap, uh, any preservatives, anything that could kill these really sensitive organisms. And I'll show you how we keep them. There's dozens of different types in here. When we bring these organisms into culture, we have to figure out a whole bunch of things. What are the conditions they like? What are the light levels? What are the temperature levels? What kind of food do they like? And most of the organisms do not do well in culture. So most of the plankton from the ocean are very difficult to maintain. So what are you doing there right now? Are you seeing anything? I actually have seen quite a few. What did you put in there? Uh, some a sanguinea or um, a casual sanguinea. Mm -hmm. What Henry has done here is he set up a water column that's stabilized and then through this tubing he can introduce different kinds of organisms and with this camera observe them. These columns allow us to have a, an environment that's stable over time and observe these organisms in as natural an environment as we can. It may be a day or two days. And remember, these organisms divide on the order of once a day, so a day is their lifetime. So we're seeing them for a really long time. These videos are then analyzed with respect to the abundance and distribution of the organisms but also their movement behaviors. We're really interested in how organisms move. We've observed that some phytoplankton literally avoid their microzooplankton or heterotrophic protist predators. That is a complexity in interactions that, to my knowledge, hasn't been observed before. These organisms are interacting with each other and they're responding to one another. It's not this mass or bulk that we'd like to characterize that's somehow very passive. There are these hugely diverse organisms and they're methodologically difficult to study. Even if we had all the funding in the world, we couldn't buy enough ships and time in order to sample it all. So we really have to find ways to extrapolate from observations that we make on one or two cruises or from one or two samples or from specific experiments in the lab. I hope in the long term to take out these methods that we're developing and take them out into the ocean and actually observe organisms in situ, so in their natural habitat.